Hey, learn audio engineering. It's good to be back, and today we're talking about something that honestly blew me away. I think this is a really cool idea. This is a company that I've seen active on Instagram a lot lately. They're called Access Analog. They are a service that allows a engineer to remotely access real analog equipment using the cloud. So they have analog equipment in their facility and they use robotics to remotely control those analog pieces of gear remotely from anywhere in the world. And all you need to access this is a strong Wi-Fi connection. This definitely puts to rest the debate on emulations, which is better, UAD, waves, well, now you can actually use the real thing for a fraction of the price of going out and buying the unit. You can just rent it for an hour or two hours or whatever. Well, how does it work? Access Analog gives musicians and recording engineers real-time access to professional analog audio hardware over a standard internet connection. So you set up this analog matrix plugin and that's going to control these units remotely for you. The analog matrix plugin remotely controls the physical knobs, buttons, and switches of the audio hardware. The audio hardware meters and indicators are precisely tracked and displayed in the plugin interface in real time. The hardware is unaltered and remains in original condition. That's pretty cool. So you can book a bunch of different hardware units and build a signal chain and connect all the pieces together like you would in a real analog studio, but you can do it right in the comfort of your own home without actually owning any, any of this gear. So they've got a number of units here. Uh, the Black Box, which I've seen a few emulations of, the Distressor, an absolute classic, the Manly Variable Mu, and this Louder Than Liftoff Silver Bullet. I've never heard of that one before. I'm sure they're gonna add more units as their company progresses, but for right now, I'm pretty sure that at the time of this video, they're actually still in beta, so they're actually still offering free trials, but that's gonna end pretty soon. So if you guys wanna jump on it, get on it right now. If not, there's definitely gonna be some coupons for you in the description below. So once you put in your information, you're going to get an email and it's going to give you a password that you can use to log in and reserve time with one of these units. On the reserve page, you have the choice of picking any one of these units that they've got shown here. You'll see that they have number one and number two. If you want to do stereo, you're going to need to make two bookings for each uh, channel within the stereo unit. So as you go through this, let's say we wanna pick that distressor and we wanna use it for two hours. We'd go next, and as we complete through this, picking the date that we wanna use it on, it's going to ask, do we wanna make any more reservations? And that's when we'd go back and we'd pick the number two distressor so that we can have the option of using stereo. But that's enough about their website. Let's see how this works in a DAW in real time actually using this in a mastering situation. I'm using a mastering situation just because it's gonna have less latency. They do have some guidelines for combating latency, but just putting it on the stereo bus is probably the easiest application for this plugin. So here we are in Logic. The song that I'm going to be using is a song that I've mixed. It's called The Gesh, and it's by a hip hop duo called Discount Lion Safari from right here in Edmonton. Definitely check them out. There'll be a link below. It was a lot of fun working with them. Really talented guys. Definitely recommend checking it out. So what we're gonna do is on our master bus, we're gonna go down to audio units and select access analog, analog matrix and we want it to be stereo, boom. Now, the first thing I love about this interface is that they have input gain, they have output gain, but more importantly, they have a mix knob. Now, it's 2019, 2020, like, I think everything should have a mix knob by now. That's such a cool feature, I absolutely love it. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is put in your email and the password that's given to you once you create an account. And we're gonna plug that in and connect. And now this is my first time going through this. So, um, okay, so it says right here, reserved. So we've got Pultec number one and Pultec number two reserved. And I think I'm gonna drag it in here. Yep, and it's gonna do that. And then for the right one, I drag it in there. Is that, is that how it works? Do I have to arm it? Waiting for playback. Okay, let's, let's play. Now, step the wax down low on the two so 
I'm getting a little bit of lag, and I think the reason is because I'm also running my screen recording software uh, in the camera. So th this might be a lot. I might have to play around with this for a little bit. Okay, we're gonna take a second and we're gonna review their suggested buffer settings and format because they do have compressed options if this happens. I'm sure there's a way around this. Okay, so I believe the problem that I was having is the buffer size was too low. So this is gonna take a little bit of time to process to leave my computer, go through the cloud, to go to the United States where it's gonna actually be processed and then to make all its way back. I've been fooling around with it a little bit and I have been getting it to work. This is really, really cool. I'm just gonna play a bit of the song and, and just go through and we're gonna hear uh, what it does as we boost and attenuate. There's gonna be a little bit of latency, you know, for the sake of this, there's a lot going on in the computers. So please be patient. <laughs> Two souls posing a threat You know you don't hold a candle to the wicked The sickest, the milk delicious Yeah, wipe before your eyes and make a melt day britches It's 21.5, it's Fox Day Mimic The sound, the way we known to get down Got the vibe, the rhythm, the snide precision Got the tribe here kicking with some so it takes a little women. bit for it to kick Sipping, in Just like we high school hippin' Hopping through the hurdles in this life we're living. Mock no turtles, never <laughs> entered in the yeah. rat race Bring thoughts full circle, still you slow on the uptake A frustrate, fiddle, must have must kick, meddling with substrate, you're piddling your pent leg quick. Someone's getting paddled, go grab the deep fib. Fox is doing battle, lacking like walkway glitz. Hit the shock, the heart stopper always flip flows like orcas in the water, seek seals like deep throats. We wrote nothing that like really thins out. Incredible quotes evoke mandible ropes as fox and animal broken, no clavicle, shoulder in the havoc, cold stone support, lavish slung like David to Goliath. It's the gash, the vision I've been given from God. It's the gash, proclivity for difficult odds. It's the gash, no is a dream my mission won't dip for call to bet the kit is gonna get much sicker it's the gash that is so cool so i i, I think it was just the buffer size because it's not it's not cutting out or anything now i think it just really needs a lot of time to process in logic i've got my audio buffer size set to 1024 the biggest that it can be as well as a 2500 millisecond buffer size in the plugin itself uh, so there's definitely some some latency with it, but because it's on the stereo bus, there's there's nothing to compare it to. So it, it's going to sound fine. Now, they do have a bunch of directions on their website for using this on individual tracks because it does get a little bit odd, right? Because you're, you've got all this latency on one track that you're actually going to have to nudge it back into place by the amount of the buffer size, plus any latency compensation that your DAW might be using. Really blown away by how smoothly this actually works. That's unreal. So I'm able to use this, this real Pultec. They've got an interface here that looks just like it, and I'm able to use it, but it's actually controlling an analog unit. That's brilliant. I'm gonna do a little couple tweaks here, and we're gonna take whatever settings I use and we're going to compare that to uh, the Waves emulation, which I have. And we're gonna see what the difference is. Low on the two souls posing a threat. You know you don't hold a candle to the wicked, the sickest, the milk delicious. Yeah, wipe before your eyes and make a melt day britches. It's 21.5, it's Fox Day Mimic. The sound, the way we known to get down. Got the vibe, the rhythm, the snide precision. Got the tribe here kicking with some wiry women. Slipping, just like we high school hippin'. Hopping through the hurdles in this life we're living. Mock no turtles, never entered in the rat race. Make thoughts full circle, still you slow on the uptake. A frustrate fiddle. Mustard must kick, meddling with substrate, you're piddling your pent leg quick. Someone's getting paddled, go grab the deep fib. Fox is doing battle, like a walkway glitz. Hit the shock, the heart stopper always flip flows like orcas in the water, seek seals like deep throats. We wrote nothing legible, people post credible quotes, evoke mandible ropes as fox and animal broken, no clavicle, shoulder in the head. We're clipping a little bit, so I guess that's a good reason to have the, the output gain on there. Slung like David to Goliath, it's the gash. The yeah, it's gonna I'm take a couple seconds God. to it's the gash. Proclivity for difficult odds, it's the, the gash. New wizardry, my mission won't dip for call to bet. The kit is gonna get much sicker, it's the gash. So if you really don't have a very good internet connection, they do also have a compressed audio format, and they say it's not really the greatest for professional results, but if you want to fool around with the software and you just want to use some, uh, get used to that analog sound, by all means, go for it. So I've copied the settings from the Axis Analog unit to the Waves Pug Tech 
EQ, and uh, we're gonna see what the difference is. So now I'm gonna make a bounce of both of the different versions, and we're gonna A, B back and forth to see if there's a huge difference in the tone. Because this plugin is controlling an analog unit, I believe I actually have to do a real-time bounce to it. So I actually need to print it onto another track. So for that, I'm gonna grab the analog matrix plugin, and I'm gonna throw it onto the track. We're gonna change the output into a stereo bus. Then we're going to create a new audio track with the input as bus one and make it stereo. And then we're just going to press record and it's going to print. So just a quick note, when you're using two of the units, you do have to make sure that you actually link the two together so that they work as a stereo unit. Because I've been doing this a couple of times and I forgot to do that and it just keeps resetting. So note to self. Okay, so we've printed both the Access Analog version and the Waves version. And you might notice that it's not quite lining up. The Access Analog version is severely delayed and that's because of all the latency of the buffer sizes that we've been using. So all we have to do is cut off this first bit here and then just nudge it over so that it's in phase with the other recording. And we can zoom in here really close and drag it over until both of the waveforms are over top of each other. Let's line up this dip right here. Boom, just like that. Both of the waveforms are in phase and everything's gonna be great. So now we're going to pan back and forth between the Axis Analog version and the Waves emulation in an A-B test and we're gonna see if we can hear a difference. Let's check that out. Down low, I'm in two souls, posing a threat. You know you don't hold a candle to the wicked, the sickest, the milk delicious. Yeah, I wipe before your eyes and make a melt day britches. It's 21 5, it's Fox Day mimic. The sound, the way we known to get down. Got the vibe, the rhythm, the snot precision. Got the tribe here kicking with some wiry women. Slipping, just like we high school hippin'. Hopping through the hurdles in this life we're living. Mock no turtles, never entered in the rat race. Bring thoughts full circle, still you slow on the uptake. I'm frustrated. Fiddle, mustard, musk cake, meddling with substrate, you're piddling your pent leg quick. Someone's getting paddled, go grab the deep fib. Fox is doing battle like a walkway glitz. It's a shock, the heart stopper always flip flows like orcas in the water, seek seals like deep throats. We wrote nothing legible, be wrote post credible quotes, evoke mandible, Vox is fox and animal, broken, no clavicle, shoulder in the havoc, cold stone support, lavish, slung like David to Goliath. It's the gash, the vision I've been given from God. It's the gash, proclivity for difficult odds. It's the so there are a couple things that I notice. The real Pultec, the Access Analog version, I, I hear the low end coming out more. That boost really adds something. It's a lot fuller. The kick drum comes out a little bit more. And the whole track, I hate to use this word, but it seems feels a little bit warmer. The waves, I don't hear that boost as much. I'm much more focused on the high end. The, the presence of the, the waves version is much crisper it, it, it brings more attention to the vocals, but it sounds kind of cheap. Like it sounds a little brittle, you know? The actual Pultec, it sounds maybe a little muffled and this might be a feature of the analog parts that you might actually need to boost a little bit more to get the same result. The Waves emulation, these emulations are essentially gonna give you the same thing every time. Whereas these analog versions, it really depends on the unit. Right? So this Waves version was emulated from a specific unit, but this unit might be a little bit different. So we're gonna get the unique characteristics of, of that unit and its age and all of the different variables that each of the electronic components have. So yeah, they are different and that's very cool. I, I really like the fact that you can get a, a more nuanced sound. You can really compare from a real unit to your emulations 
without having to break the bank and spend thousands of dollars. This is really cool. So if you guys are interested in trying this for yourself, check the link below because I've got a special link that'll hook you guys up with some coupons if you want to try it out. So what do you think of this remote access analog system? Let me know in the comments. I'm really eager to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Some of you may be wondering, where's the Sennheiser video and the factory tour and the interview and everything? It is coming. I just really had to get this out first. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be a lot more content coming. So thanks for sticking with me. Thank you for watching. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.